Satnam. Blessings to everyone. Today we are down to chapter 10. Wow, I think we have done very well where this book is concerned. And I am having tremendous pleasure in reading this book out to you. And uh, in the process of reading, of course, there are certain parts which you might not understand. All I can say is you can write in to me, contact at diasing.com, ask questions, and even better, go out and buy the book. Seeking Success and Happiness, you can write in to us at diasing.com and uh, we can post one out to you, which is the cheaper version from India, the smaller font. Uh, this is available through Amazon. Am I saying that right? Yes, sir. Amazon? Amazon. Amazon. <laughs> Amazon.com. Is it dot com? Yeah. Amazon. Amazon. Anyway, everyone knows Amazon. And I think there is a, a, an ebook as well that they do give out. And uh, in India, get in touch with Sanbun. S A N B U N. Sanbun. And uh, Arvinder, who is in charge will be, I think, more than happy to get copies out to you. Preferably get multiple copies so that they can give out to friends. Believe you me, I think this is very interesting simply because it's the first time such an effort has been made. And I'm very proud of the fact that I had the opportunity of being able to put this out. We have reached chapter 10. And of course, one other point, of course, is in the pandemic, this is a great time to start reading books again. The books that you have never got around to reading and uh, like I said this is one of them this chapter is uh, we have gone through the chapter on meditation visualization which personally I found very very interesting because that helps one to elevate one's life uh, I believe more in the experiential form of Sikhism uh, this life philosophy um, and in fact my second book is called Zen of seeking because your own experiences are more important you you can learn and read as much as you like but until you yourself start experiencing certain things I I don't think all that reading it's worthwhile you can you can use that reading to t tell others but you need to be able to experience things yourself then it becomes much more intense and uh, uh, helpful to yourself because at the end of the day yourself you are very important you are answerable for yourself nobody else can do that for you you are responsible for your own emancipation your own enlightenment that where spirituality is concerned your experiences what you do your meditation and the amount of time that you put into spiritual activities is important I'm not talking of rituals that's a different thing altogether but personally getting involved. No point going to the Granthi in the Gurdwara and saying, Paisa, do me a Sahaj part, please. And you think you are attaining benefit out of that? I don't think you are. Unless you do that Sahaj part yourself. And struggle through it. It doesn't matter. Vahiguru is looking for your sincerity, not the amount that you put out, not the amount of money that you can give other people to do things for you. I don't think it works like that. I really don't. <laughs> So this chapter is chapter 10, the five vices and the ultimate path to happiness. In the pursuit of true happiness, it is important to understand the vices we naturally acquire through the course of our life and why we acquire them. We need to recognize them within us and then make the effort to overcome them. In fact, turn them into strengths. Human conditioning is an intrinsic part of the passage of life, but it's all materialistic, Maya based. You can see the fuller meaning of Maya in the glossary of words at the back. As time goes by and one starts looking for a higher purpose, we need firstly to recognize that our lives have been in our Maya based. They are useful for this lifetime, but not for the more important spiritual journey. That spiritual journey in human form is a glimpse into eternity. That realization and knowing that something needs to be done is the first step towards enlightenment. 
Sikhism lists five vices. Kaam, Krodh, Lob, Mo, Hankar. Kaam, my explanation of that is lust. But it's lust not only for sexual purposes, also for power, lust for power, lust for subjugation, lust for putting somebody else down, victimizing others. Krodh stands for anger. Lob, greed, wanting more. Mo is attachment and ahankar, ego. To better understand them, recognize them within us and subdue them, let us follow the process of acquisition of these vices as we grow up, beginning with complete innocence at moment of birth. Uh, of, of the book itself, what I was trying to put down here is that it, it will appear that initially we are taught these vices. We are made to become part of these vices and then we have to unlearn them in the later part of our lives. And so this is why I have put it down into seven steps. Uh, let's see what you think. First step is innocence. At birth, a newborn has a sense of freedom. Freedom from worry, ambition, aspirations, fear of failure, success, power, control, affluence, prestige, fame, possessiveness, attachment, and similar Maya-based traits. In fact, I have just named you all the Maya-based, that is, materialistic life. Mother, mum, is associated with comfort, food, and care. This state lasts for, lasts for perhaps the first three years of a child. There is complete freedom. Keep in mind that this is the happiest state one can be in and perhaps at the end of the spectrum this is the this is close to the state of anand bliss we wish to be in how we start off that is how we want to end right at the end we go through the whole spectrum highly elevated and evolved human beings believe that if we can transfer our faith in our mothers to faith in god that is a shortcut to stand to reach this state of anand but that would probably lead to a rather boring life without ambitions and aspirations. So let us move on. We want and are in the complete human experience in this journey of the spirit. Number two, identity, the emergence of ego. At about three years of age, there is a crossover from innocence to the I identity. There is birth of duality. I and you. I first, I want, I do not know how to get it, but I want it. I am most important. It is all about I, me and mine. Liv Shudki Lagi Trishna Maya Amarvartaya Guru Granth Sahib, page 921 Liv Shudki Lagi Trishna Maya Amarvartaya Attachment to God, or good rather, wears off, and the growing child becomes attached to materialistic desires. The worldly human drama of Maya begins. Unfortunately, ego is important to develop a human being's confidence, ambitions, and aspirations. So parents unwittingly feed the ego. Child experts now believe that the most important period of a child's growth is between three to five years old. Its ego, how may, hankar, which has just been awoken, needs to be tempered with virtues like love, compassion, care, and sharing. The third stage is mat, intellect. At this stage, through puberty, teenagehood into young adulthood, the math becomes a dominant force. Again, you'll have to refer to the chapter on man and math. What chapter was that, Jameel? Three. Chapter three. The spirit moves to the back seat. It becomes the silent observer. The thirst for possessions, recognition, power and fame 
or pursuit of decadent fun. The pillars of materialism, Maya, become paramount. Formal education as we know it <laughs> is geared towards materialistic knowledge so that students can go into vocations which earn them a living. Education systems do not teach values or spirituality, but subjects mainly in pursuit of economic, scientific or cultural advancement. Spiritual knowledge is generally frowned upon unless some religious denomination can get its way in to use religious education as a stepping stone to proselytize, unfortunately. Nor is any form of moral education encouraged because it is either drowned out by those opposed to religion per se, organized religion's preoccupation with proselytization, or left bereft of spirituality, which besides other attributes, teaches humility. Though ego offers no possibility of lasting fulfillment, it is able to blind one that maya, material success and power, is everything. Nevertheless, it is part of the human process of learning and also towards one's spiritual progress. Guru Granth Sahib, page 466. How may rog hai, daru pi is my. Ego is a chronic disease, but within ego is its cure. To understand and overcome ego, one has to have it, recognize it, and find its cure through itself. In this shape, all vices are materialistic and self-gratifying, but bereft of love. Everything is about acquisition and feeding the ego. The spirit is smothered with maya, wealth, self-image, status, power, fame, and family attachments. But a small voice keeps saying, something is not quite right. This is not happiness. This is not love. There's something beyond this. Rupai kamai dosti pukhe sadai gand Labbai malai kul mil michal unge saurd palang Ponke koab huar hoi Fakar pite and Chupai changa nanaka Vena nave mo gand Guru Granth Sahib, page 1288. Beauty and sexual desires are tied together. Greed is totally engrossed in its search for wealth. Anger barks and brings ruin on itself, blindly pursuing useless conflicts. It is good to be silent, O Nanak. Without the Naam, one's mouth spews forth only filth. Humility, simple living, and staying close to the source of all reality is the only answer for all discontent and happiness. Then we come to number four, heart, man. After reaching the stage above and wallowing in it for some time, the human being then makes a discovery. Happiness is not only in taking, but more so in giving. The fear of loss, isolation, failure, and coming to grips with death ushers in a certain emptiness. This emptiness is overcome by giving. Great acts of philanthropy are carried out by the rich and famous, saving the whales, adopting children from poor regions, saving other endangered species, charity, feed the poor and devastated, help others. So seva, service, offers a path for shackling ego. There is a feel-good factor in giving after all the achieving and taking, but ego still remains strong. Seva without humility has its drawbacks. Seva in ego leads to further karmic bondage. Utter humility and praying for the grace of Vaheguru within seva leads to ultimate emancipation and freedom from karmic bondage. Seva is an expression of our love for others. That love can only arise when we have contentment and humility. Ego is differentiation of self from the rest of creation. 
including from God, the I factor. Those with big egos announce to the world that they have a special connection with God. As President Bush did in 2003 when declaring war on Iraq. I trust God speaks through me. Without that, I couldn't do my job. It is important for egotistical people to be seen as different from the rest of creation, to feel special. They don't see God in everyone else or in God's other work. Eventually, this need to be separate from the vastness of God and fellow human mankind is the undoing of egotistical people. Number five, I call this stage the sick, the seeker, seeking the truth. The third stage above that I mentioned earlier is the dangerous stage and must be watched very carefully. That is about ego. Or the human gets entrenched in it without learning the joy of giving, which is the fourth stage above and pursuit of truth. The fourth stage of giving brings one out of the third stage, but raises questions it cannot answer. Why can't I save all the whales? Why can't I feed all those who are starving? Why can't I save all those who are being killed? Why is there pain and suffering in this world? One experiences the helplessness of ego-driven giving when one senses that one cannot achieve complete giving. Ego cannot appease the hunger of all. It cannot cure all the sick. It cannot save all the whales. There is a new felt need, a new felt yearning. Ego takes a real beating. A yearning for the ultimate truth arises, the dawning of realization that one is a very minuscule part of all this creation. We have our own destiny, which we must fulfill. Some have lofty destinies, like the originators of religions, faiths and ways of life, the Mahatma Gandhis, the Nelson Mandela's, the Aung San Suu Kyi's or Mother Teresa's of this world. Ours, you and me, is perhaps a lesser destiny, but certainly it is there. The inner search, now in complete humility, finally begins. The sixth, second last stage, is what I call the Sant, or the Savant, the witness. That search leads to understanding, pure silence and calm like a window into the infinite. It is the end of ego. This reality leaves no more desires. Gunge ki muthiai it is called, the unexplainable. No desire to possess, no desire to subdue, to harm or to destroy. No more desire for fame, a state of equipoise. There is the serenity of acceptance of God's will, hukum, and eradication of the fear of failure, loss, animosity, and even death. The best description of Anand comes from a particular Sikh hymn. Jo nara dukh mein dukh nahi manne. It's a beautiful Shabad on page 633. Uh, I'm going to put this down as a recording. Our next Shabbat is going to be this one. Jo nar dukh ma dukh nahi maane Sukh sane ar pe nahi jaanke Kanchan maati maane Kanchan maati maane जो नर दुख में दुख नहीं माने सुख सने हर पे नहीं जागे कंचन माटी माने कंचन माटी माने What a great Shabbat this is. The person who in pain feels no pain, one who is not affected by pleasure, affection and fear and deems gold as dust. One who is not swayed by condemnation nor praise and who suffers not from greed, worldly love and pride. 
who remains unaffected by joy or sorrow, and who minds not honour nor dishonour. One who renounces all hope and yearning remains desire-free, and who is not touched by lust nor wrath, anger, within his mind abides Vaigru. Such a person understands the way and is blessed with the grace of the Guru. Such a person blends with the Lord as water mingles with water. This is the state of equipoise or anand, which was described earlier in chapter 7. The final state is such khand. Such khand. Such khand was kar, kar kar nadar neha. Vahiguru is present in all stages. Your personal focus shifted from one aspect to the next, back and forth. In the end, one returns to the beginning, the beginning of pure love and innocence. One goes through struggle for possession, power, lust, attachment, fame, and then giving and seva, back to unconditional love. Ambitious, ordinary man attains knowledge, transform into a sage, Sage attains realization, becomes a humble, ordinary human being. Life comes full cycle. Oh, sorry, full circle. This is the human journey of the spiritual being. We are born and according to our karma, we go through this journey and get back to the very beginning. The important lesson to understand is that we are here to learn. We need to differentiate early what is important in this lifetime. We need to work out what truly is an illusion, the materialistic, materialistic life, Maya itself, and what is the reality, the Naam. That reality, which is beyond birth and death, as we know it in this human form, can be felt by the Man, emotional brain, the heart, which is the doorway to the soul, the God in embryo within us, the Atma. Again, Pai Prapat Manukh Devariya, Govind Milan Ki Teri Bariya. Pai Prapat Manukh Devariya, Govind Milan Ki Teri Bariya. What a beautiful, very simple lines of Pangatiya. Pai Prapat Manukh Devariya, Govind Milan Ki Teri Bariya. Eh teri bariya, eh teri bariya, Govind milan ki, eh teri bariya, Pai parapat manukh de huriya, Govind milan ki, eh teri bariya. Page 12, it's in the Rara Sahib. You have been gifted the human form. This is your opportunity to be one with the Creator, the source of all reality. Now we come to the exercise. Exercise number 10. Sit comfortably, relax, breathe slowly, and reflect on this very important chapter from birth to your present age and state in life. Reflect on your birth and growth into teenagehood and the acquisition of all these vices. Ego, anger, attachment, greed, and finally, lust. The wanting of gifts and toys and throwing tantrums or becoming sullen, disruptive and misbehaving if you do not get your way. Possessing something and not wanting to part with it or share it. Desiring something and wanting it so badly that you had sleepless nights. Feeling your first lustful urges and how you managed or stifled them. A touchy subject at the best of times. But one needs to differentiate between sex as a tool for procreation and an expression of love between two adults against sex as recreation or lustful act to violate, humiliate, rape and dominate. Reflect on the ongoing battle to subdue these vices and in fact turn them into positive forces. Finding joy in doing good, including helping others and being charitable with your earnings and also your time. Then move on to that sense of hopelessness 
in not being able to do more, but being grateful for being able to be of service to the best of your abilities. Finally, the serenity to accept those things which are beyond your control and are not able to solve, like peace in the Middle East or relieving humanity of poverty. That's the end of the chapter, short chapter. But it's all about understanding your own life. It is delving deep into yourself, looking through your childhood, looking at what happened to you as life went on and how you changed your life, if you have changed your life, or how you should change your life to reach a stage of equipoise where you can treat all defeats with the same calm as you accept all achievements, where you can treat gold as dust, where anger does not affect you, where someone else doing harm to you does not affect you anymore because you are in a serene state, where even tremendous joy is tempered by the fact that this joy too shall pass. Something else will come in. And when there's a great disaster which takes place, to be able to say, this too shall pass. So we are going through that kind of a period now. We are going through the pandemic. And as the days go on, everyone seems to be getting more and more anxious. And we want to try and temper that, knowing that I'm still here. Vaheguru has been very kind to me. Become grateful for the, those things that you already have, to be able to sit with the family, to be able to spend time with them. Yes, materially you might be losing out, but let me assure you, spiritually, you're gaining a lot if you allow yourself to gain that. That's what these seven steps are all about. Once again, thank you for joining me, and I look forward to doing the next chapter, which is about the best of both worlds. I've lived in the West and the East, and I have certain ideas of my own which uh, is in, in that part. Because we must not take one way of life as granted, or oh, I live a Western way of life. I have changed my name from Rabindranath to Robinson. No, that's not what we are about. Do not forget your own roots, but build on them because you are moving into a global village. And this is the time for reflection of this sort of things in your life. I am doing that on a daily basis and I have the joy of being able to read through my book. I'm finding things in my book which I had forgotten about. So I thank you for giving me this opportunity. Once again, I'll make mention that we are starting something new, thanks to my daughter and my good friend, Darren Mullen, uh, who is my sound recorder, engineer. Sorry, who else? One of. Yes. One of, of course, one of. And I as well, absolutely. And there are a lot of people, huh? And Dheeraj, he's working of on course. a track too at the moment. Oh, Vahegru. And so is Dheeraj. Most of you know Dheeraj, our wonderful great tabla player and a wonderful human being as well. So we are starting this new channel, YouTube. And I would like you to click on subscribe. Subscribe doesn't mean you have to pay anything. No, subscribe no, no. simply means register. But somehow YouTube uses the term subscribe. Jameel will put it on, on the face now on the page and uh, please just click subscribe so that we can get as many hits as possible to legitimize the channel that we have now got in mind we have got this wonderful new item ready to go which is don't worry be happy nanak chinta mat karo chinta tis hi hai and it will blow you out of your stockings so thank you very much and I look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow with chapter 11, with chapter 11, the best of both worlds. Thank you, Satnam, Vaheguru and blessings.